Hi everyone, welcome back. So I finally got around to editing the third video in this series of me creating this large uh, installation piece. The overall size is gonna be 18 by 13 feet. And its destination is that it's gonna be installed in a downtown condo lobby. Um, and so, okay, so let me give you in a bit of an, um, uh, a rundown. I just want to say if you haven't seen um, session one and two on my YouTube channel uh, where I started just to get some background context of how I got to where I am right here that you are watching, um, uh, there's two more videos that come before this. And so in this one here, I'm tackling panel number two. So I have already uh, done the whatever layer I was on for panel one. I have it sitting on top of canvas two. And, and now I'm just kind of, it's nice to have the, the two canvases together so I can see my reference points, um, the overall composition. I don't have too much room to stand uh, back far enough, which is why this is the viewpoint that you're getting because just in terms of space limitations. Um, I do have the option to open my door and stand out in the hall so I can get a better view of it. Um, but I, I know what the image is, so I can kind of, it's allowing me to see this painting, um, or I, I guess I should say I, I don't have to see this painting from such a distance just because I know what the composition is. And uh, you can see my reference points, my, um, the images are on two pieces of paper that are to the left of canvas two and they're taped to the wall there. Um, so that kind of is my guide that I am using. So I kind of know where I'm supposed to be going. It's just in terms or just a matter of um, me painting the painting. And so I am using that lovely stain brush that I think I got from Home Depot or Lowe's which has been amazing. I can't, I can't say how much more I like it than I absolutely love it. It holds so much paint and so much um, like medium that I was using and water that I don't have to keep always filling up my brush. It applies the paint in, um, it allows me to do nice translucent layers, which I love doing. So it's been great that I think one of the annoyances for me is I always have to reload my brush. It just kind of drives me crazy. And so you can see how I just did that, how it's, it, I'm still using blue, but it's a lighter version of it. And that's what I'm always playing with. Um, I guess I, I work probably a little bit more from dark to light. And sometimes I go too light too fast and then I have to go overlay with another dark color to kind of work that way again. Uh, but this one, I seem to, it's probably because I've been painting this painting in my head for the last year over and over and over. So I haven't really had any areas where I had to go back and, and, uh, and um, really do some major adjustments just because I think the image is seared into my my brain and I'm using also my mesomizer I think that's how you say it which is essentially a silicone bowl scraper if anybody's a baker that's what that is I will put a link into my description because I've had a few of you ask about where to get them I, I think trying to find them online has been complicated so uh, there is a link that I will put down, which is to, um, um, I can't remember, uh, Rebecca, I think is her name, but I can't remember his name. They're, they're cold wax uh, artists, and um, I think they have an agreement with the company that makes these, and so they have them listed on their website for sale, and they're a good price, except for sh shipping. They, well, for anybody in the States, it'll be fine for you, but if if you're trying to get them shipped to Canada or international, uh, it's a it's a bit expensive, but worth it. And they come in all different sizes. And that's my um, my two dollar squeegee from the dollar store. 
which has been, again, uh, amazing for this project. It's, it was just the right size. It's nice and light too. Um, helps me to spread that paint out. Here, see there, I'm just kind of pushing the paint around just to kind of add a couple of little pops of texture. And there is, if you notice, there is a lot of movement in the canvas, but that is mainly because of the other canvas that's sitting on top of it and the angle that the canvas is on. It isn't ideal, but um, it won't be like that once it's uh, mounted onto the wall. Each canvas will be uh, supported individually, so there won't be that much pressure on it. And so I did cut out, just to give you a bit of context, I did cut out some of the time it takes for me to mix my paint, just because I don't think it's all that exciting to see me swirl my brush around in my palette, trying to load my brush. So I really love working, uh, especially when I'm working large, is applying the paint with one hand and then making um, like pushing that paint around with the squeegee with my right. It also kind of just reminds me to keep myself balanced. Um, I don't know if, there, if, if you have um, heard it in some of my other videos, uh, painting can really take a toll, especially when you're you know predominantly just using one arm. And uh, it's definitely taken a bit of a toll on my shoulder and my neck, so I'm starting to really be mindful. Um, I want this career to last as long as I possibly can make it last. So um, that means I need to take care of my body and my muscles and my arm, my neck, my shoulders. So there has been lots of points in creating this piece where I'm actually, uh, you know, I stop camera, I go off camera and I, I stretch it out. Uh, making I do have tennis elbow which has been interesting um, but it is getting better because I'm being very diligent about taking care of the tool that helps to pay my bills so so this double double handed approach has been helpful uh, towards the end of this video you'll see me really um, again working the the um, the left and the right at the same time. So it's important to like, it, you see me every now and then take a step back, uh, reference my photo, make sure I'm, I'm on task and where I'm supposed to be. And just, I want you guys to understand too, when I'm just painting, like this is a, a very particular piece there. It's based off of another piece. Um, I have to ensure that I'm giving the clients the image that they are hoping for. But when I am just creating artwork uh, for my own website or for galleries, there is no photograph or image that I'm referencing. Uh, all of that stuff is in my brain. It's I'm I, I guess I would say I'm a true intuitive painter, so I don't have any images that I'm working from. The images in my mind. And I was also really careful with this piece, just again, because of the sheer size, that I had made that decision that I was gonna work very, very light layers of color to build up the, the final image. Sometimes I can work really heavy, which adds a lot of pressure onto the canvas. So this one I'm working um, a lot of um, lighter layers. And because of that, I would say the most of my, um, what do I want to say here? The most of my cost is probably in the mediums that I'm using. And I think most of the products here are Liquitex. And so I'm using, oh, that's not true. I'm not being honest. Uh, golden, there's a golden product in there. Uh, high flow golden paint. No, that's not true either. High flow, what am I trying to say? High flow medium paint. I think that's what it is. It just, it's a, it's a, um, an acrylic medium that makes your paints very watery. And uh, it's 
a better product to use instead of just using straight water. And so that's what's mixed into that bottle. Um, there's water in there and then there's also the uh, medium as well. And then I'm also using some high flow golden paint as well. So very light paint. It helps me to add that. You can see that dark layer. It's quite transparent. And that was the reason um, that I chose to go with that. I'm sorry, I'm, I kind of, I didn't see this piece here, so I, or this part of this video. I must have looked away and it was just interesting to watch that little bit. <laughs> I also think it's kind of fun. Well, I don't know if it's fun, but it adds interest to your painting to add opaque layers and then transparent layers, you know, playing around so that everything you do is not consistent. The last thing you want, I think, when you're making a abstract painting is for everything to be the same. It's about differences, inconsistencies, thick paint, thin paint, dark paint, light paint, um, texture, non-texture, if you can master all of adding all of those to your composition, it, it would be quite unique to, to look at. Okay, so here I just grabbed um, a whole bottle of Liquitex glazing medium, and I'm adding it to the whole canvas, right? I have just added a, a nice transparent layer of color, and so now I'm adding some extra glazing medium, and I'm just spreading around that color to kind of change the tone of the painting to warm it up a little bit i don't i wouldn't normally do this on a regular size canvas but this kind of just speeds the process up a little bit and the glazing medium also sometimes can not sometimes but it can slow down or um, keep the level the openness of the color so that it doesn't dry on you that quickly as you all know acrylics can dry quite um, quite fast. So that was the other thing that I just reminded myself is I'm also using a medium that keeps the drying time open so that I can work this sort of a little bit more like oil paints, um, slowing down the drying time when you're working on a very, very large canvas is important. And so that was the other thing that you can't quite see because it's off camera that I'm adding that product to all of the paints that I'm mixing. So I have to say this, um, this process has been interesting to, to complete or work on something that this, that is this large is, um, really different from anything else that I've ever done and how you attack it is completely different too. So this isn't how, I mean, the process of what I'm doing is what I would normally do to paint a painting, but um, there are other factors that I have to consider. Um, I really can only work these layers and these canvases, like when I'm alternating them and having them sit on top of each other like that, uh, I need studio help. I, so I have to wait until I can coordinate that um, with my, my studio mate and my friend um, who comes down to spend the weekend with me so that she can help me move these canvases. And I did take a little video of that, so I will try and find it. I can't remember. Um, whose phone it's on and they have to send it to me so I can give you an idea of, of how we're moving these things around. And so I'm, I'm, for me, this is painful to have to watch myself paint at this speed. I, I am, um, there's so many of you that like real time painting, like real, uh, instead of, uh, what's it called? Time lapse. Um, but I love time lapse. I just, uh, I like to get to the end faster. <laughs> which isn't the same for everybody, I get that. And so here I'm just spreading around that paint again. Um, 
with my little squeegee or my mesomizer, my bowl scraper, however you want to refer to it, my green thingy, that works too. Um, I'm spreading around that kind of sea green, earthy color. It's always important to stand back, have a look, make sure that you're where you're where you need to be. So after this, I think uh, I think this is the only video I'll show from this angle, I, I think anyway. After this part, I take each canvas um, uh, on the upper end of the studio and then I, and then I work on them individually. Uh, at that point, I have a better view of the canvas, which means the recordings that I have from those sessions have a better angle so that you can see both sides of the canvas. Here, you, like where I'm working right now is a little bit far away from the camera, but I just, with the space again, I can't get a good angle on it. Somebody gave me a suggestion, which I thought was priceless, um, to hire someone to, to run a drone behind me so that they, so the drone could capture my painting um, as I was moving around. And I thought, gosh, that would just, I would always be worried that that thing would crash into my head or something. But what a, what an interesting way or completely thinking outside the box on that one. I loved it. So now I'm starting to um, peel away at the composition, starting to add the white, which isn't just white. It's um, always tinted white, tinted with whatever I'm using. I'll have to do a video on, on how um, on how I mix my colors so that all of the hues are cohesive and, and part of the same family. Uh, I think it's such an important component of painting that I, I was never taught, not that I took a whole bunch of classes in, in high school, or not high school, uh, in university in, in regards to art, but I know there's some videos out there that do talk about this process of how you can keep your fam your colors um, all in the same family. And so I will definitely try and get a video on that going at some point. This monster commission is kind of making me a little bit far behind. I haven't um, been able to add any new paintings to my website and my website is starting to look like a ghost town so I need to there's so many things that I have to do and there's only one of me so as you can see that white is starting to add some more uh, depth into this painting where I'm I'm highlighting some areas with brighter uh, a brighter white if that's the proper term a lighter color so it's it constantly has that like that push and push and pull right and that white is is try, it's not just a titanium white I have some mixing white in there as well um, sometimes it's called a saw uh, like a mixing white or zinc white it gives it this um, What's the word I'm looking for? I have to not do voiceovers early in the morning. It's like 7.30 here. Uh, a transparent, um, atmospheric color, eerie color, foggy. You know what I'm, I, I hope you guys know what I'm trying to say. I'm pretty sure you do. So titanium is like thick. You can't really see it and it's heavy and it's not, I mean, I use it all the time but when you want to use white to just kind of minimize what's underneath and not completely completely cover it up adding some zinc white will really help you it takes a little while to get used to 
So you will get frustrated with it because you could use a ton of it to add to a color to change that hue, but it, it, uh, it really just slightly alters the color. But for projects like this, where you want to work in this nice transparent layers, it, uh, it works great. Constant, uh, here I am working my, my two-handed motion again. You know, add paint with the left, because I'm left-handed, and then move the paint around with the squeegee with my right. With acrylics, it's so important to work quickly and working using both hands in this process is, is something that I, I really encourage you all to uh, incorporate to start working both, both hands. It helps with the blending too. A lot of people have said to me they think my paintings are made with oil just because of the way my colors look. Um, and and how I can blend my colors in together and so this is part of the process of what I'm doing is I'm work I'm using both of my arms at the same time again I love that stain brush I can't wait to tackle some other paintings um, with it And so I'm chipping away here. There's a, a segment in the original piece where there's these little white sort of more rectangle shapes and they go across the painting. And I was so excited when I was doing this in my head. Um, and I'm like, look at me, look at me. I'm actually doing it because I, I can see the composition starting to come out and I was getting really, really excited. And then when I stood back after I looked at the painting and I thought, oh, that that doesn't look right <laughs> it was just it was just completely straight across and it was very non-dimensional and uh and I thought oh boy that was that was not good and so I had to go back in and I don't think I should I don't know if I have a, a video of it but I had to go back in and 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 change the shapes of them because it really does have some like a um a bit of an arch there was you know some movement to those those squares or those rectangles, they weren't like side by side in complete straight, straight order. <laughs> it's funny how when you're standing so close to something, you, you think it looks amazing, but if you don't take the time to stand back, um, it's not good. Okay, so here I am this whole time, and I'm not talking to myself, I'm talking to my studio mate. This whole time I've been painting, I was fighting with these beats on top of my head and I couldn't understand why they weren't, they just kept sliding. Um, and it was at that moment I realized I had them on backwards. So not only do I wear my shirt inside out when I'm making YouTube videos, I sometimes put my headset on the wrong way. It's just like you get so excited and you want to go and paint, you just jump in, you don't really think about things. Okay, so you can see how straight this is. <laughs> and in my head I'm, at the moment, I'm like, wow, look at me go, this is so great yeah it wasn't it wasn't great <laughs> and so that's you know you don't beat you don't beat yourself up for that you just go back in you wait to, for it to dry and um i i had to see that was me going yeah yeah look at my painting yeah it wasn't good it wasn't good <laughs> you just go back in yeah add some more of the dark paint and you readjust and um i mean it's all it's all part of the parcel like it is what it is. You can't, you don't ever get anything right on the first try. And that's what makes painting so interesting and, and what makes abstract paintings have so many layers and so many dimensions is all the little recorrections that we have to do. When you leave remnants of that behind, it adds so much depth to your painting. So don't ever get you don't harp on yourself for your errors and things that you don't do exactly the way you were hoping to do them because all those little mistakes are just um, 
it just makes your painting a little bit more interesting. Yeah, still thinking I'm winning with that section. <laughs> I had a great weekend painting, I have to say. This is nowhere near, what you're seeing in this video is nowhere near where this painting is currently. Uh, I do have some more updated photos that I have posted on my Instagram. And yes, I will put my Instagram link in the description for you all and my website. Um, but it's also, my social medias are also in my banner on my YouTube page on the right side. If you're looking for my links. Um, and then I think I just end this video doing some drips, which I, they're really fun to see. This video actually shows um, that process quite nicely. So uh, stick around to the end or at least fast forward to the end so you can see the drips. And the drips are part, especially when you're doing a painting that's this large, if you just keep, you know, spreading white paint on and, and smooshing it to, the, to a flat, um, sheen it's not going to create that depth for you so adding some drips is is um, a real great way to really liven up that background layer has to be a soca reggae song on that i'm listening to right now i can just tell by my, my little tiny dance there Now I'm going to grab my bottle of medium, high flow medium and water. And that brush is so full of paint. And you can tell it's not just water just because of the thickness of the drips. So adding the medium to the water bottle is another little trick that I use. That way I'm not just using straight water. Um, and those drips are just great. They add so much. Yeah, I wish you guys can see that in person. I love that. I could watch that forever. And that's it for this video, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will try and get uh, part four for you guys next week. Have a great week.